Hello, do you like New Japan Pro Wrestling? Are you a Shin Nihon freak? If so, check out the Super Jcast with Joel and Damon on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. And even if you fucking hate New Japan Pro Wrestling, listen to the Super Jcast anyway. Not just for our great show reviews, analysis, and pastrami sandwiches, mm-hmm. but there's also usually some dick jokes somewhere in the obligatory opening 30 minutes of absolute nonsense we chat about every single week. That's the Super Jcast for all all the best talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling, crisps, and pornography. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Do you like professional wrestling? Well, we like professional wrestling too. We better because there was a lot of it this week. I am Jeff Hawkins. He is Chris Novembrino. Quick note up top. I'll be rejoining the Fightful family on Monday doing Raw uh, review with Sean Ross App as Denise Salcedo isn't going to be able to do it. That'll be fun, Chris. Um, yeah, well, I'm happy you're finally working things out with your family. <laughs> You know, the thing about doing Fightful post shows, at least now, is like most of the people who go there don't remember I was ever there. And I don't mind it so much. It's just the the Denise Simps. I have no problem with Denise. It's the Denise Simps that I'm going to have a problem. Oh, you're not Denise. I don't want to listen to you, old man. Get off the thing. <laughs> get grandpa back to the home. You know, I get a lot of those comments in the chat and... They don't affect me until about the 30th one. And then it's <laughs> bad. Oh, by the way, Chris here has been uh, working on his novel in an abandoned hotel in the mountains in the snow and killed Scatman Crothers. So uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, this past <laughs> week here, I spent my first night on top of a mountain, which was exciting. On Thursday, we had a snowstorm come into Albuquerque and... I had to go up on Sandia Peak and spend the night in our upper terminal and shovel snow Ah. and push snow off the mountain uh, and and basically (laughs) keep all the dead. No, uh, so the worst part, I mean, uh, conditions were in the negatives with the wind. Uh, The wind was pretty brutal. Uh, I mean, it was starting at like around four degrees. And then with the wind chill, we were down to like minus 15. Uh, The problem became that we had crosswinds so we couldn't throw it off of the face of the mountain and then sometimes off the back of the mountain too was not an option so it was like a logistical problem of where are we going with the snow in an ideal scenario we'd like to you know just dump it onto the ski side right like but there were times there was a couple of times where i did that and they got blasted with it in my face and you know i have a ball club on and like my like triple layered hoodie thing config that i have all set up and everything like i i got this whole thing down but uh yeah i got i got some snow on my face a couple of times and it was just like this effing sucks uh <laughs> the people I, who really like snow are the people who never lived in it don't get me wrong point. i it's I, fine it's I, fun i like my hot pants i got yeah. i got heated i got heated pants it's oh did you get where, did you get heated yeah, pants yeah they, they rule and my i clava is, is is a game changer my ball really my balaclava hoodie thing for like head coverage like dude i got head and neck down i got heated gloves um i mean my hot hands my, did you do you have the packets of hot hands that you stick no, in your no, pockets no, or anything they, like that? they're okay. actually ba- they're battery powered See, um, I don't I got, trust I got, batteries in the wet. That's my problem. But yeah, <clears throat> they're uh, 3M like waterproof sealed. Same thing with the snow pants. Okay. Um, and like they they charge up relatively quick, and like none of these things are particularly expensive. Um, and for it, when you are working in these conditions, it is the price of comfort versus actually causing yourself physical harm. So like, yeah, okay, you're comfortable, but also like you're not getting frostbitten. Um, so, so I've got the, I've got the heated clothing game down now at this point, uh, the, the other element though, that is rough with the shoveling snow is doing it at altitude. Like the mountain yes. is at 10,378 feet. 
Um, and that means it has 17% less oxygen than at sea level. And it is tiring. I did 75 minutes of like hard pushing uh, on Thursday night overnight. And when we went in, I was sucking wind in a way that I have not sucked wind in a long time. Um, I also, I got out of the scale when I waited today after that, like shift and like the rest cycle and I'm like down like three pounds and, and, and I totally look it. Uh, and I felt it just from the, uh, the work cycle here. Um, it's a lot, it, it sounds strenuous and draining and it is, but if you like it, you love it. And it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, it's nice being in nature, dude. It yeah, is. The, the show. It's so it's so nice not having to do officey stuff anymore. And like just like my my Oh, you feel like ass. a man now, do you? Oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I I feel mentally unburdened. It's not about like feeling like a man. It's more gotcha. like feeling mentally unburdened from like, oh remember, you gotta send off that email at 3 p.m. Like like <laughs> it, it's like no, no, like my my task is like make sure the heating snorkel to the building is free of ice so that the building doesn't go cold. Like everything feels very purposeful and I like that. This show also will be 70 minutes of hard pushing. So you'll be <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. It's always hard pushing Woo. on shake them ropes, Woo. daddy-o. We're going to be doing some uphill climbing. There's a lot to go over. So let's you, Let's started. talk about the devil. No. <laughs> do you want to start with the devil, really? I mean, No, I, I just wanted to say to that. Do. Okay. <laughs> let's, see, let's see the news. Uh, head of production of WWE, Kevin Dunn, has left the company. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to recover from this one because like he he's been an idea maker, an idea bringer. Um, this guy who Will you let I me think, get through the story. Just no, like, I, I I think I want to do some remembrances real quickly. Uh, <laughs> your your version of events is interesting enough, but he brought us some great camera angles along the way. He brought us extremely bright lighting. Um, I think that this guy understood women's wrestling and the presentation of female wrestlers in a way that <laughs> will be remembered very positively for years to come. And he was beloved by a lot of his colleagues, both uh, the ones that you know from the wrestling world, but also the ones that I know from behind the scenes. Uh, you know, and, and, and can I just say, uh, as a man who has actually spoken to Kevin Dunn on the phone. Have you? Gonna, yes. Yes. Back when I was captioning, yep, there was a time where Dunn was on the phone with me and uh, my other associate, uh, my main point of contact. Um, I just want to say, from all of us here at the Voice of Wrestling Network, job well done, and we're going to miss you, Kev. Kevin, well done, yes. Uh And now, uh, what were you going to say, Jeff? Oh, no, you're you're fine. He's he's a douche canoe. Uh, I am not. No, 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 no. Hey, hey, hey. New year, new you, Jeff. Okay, yeah. Uh, he responsible for handy cams, much like, and and just cut, 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 cut. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, it was Dunn's decision to leave. Uh, he basically, at least internally, cited a lack of autonomy once Endeavor came in and started wanting to make budget cuts to improve profitability <laughs> in the department. Oh, you mean no longer could the show be his fever dream of shit? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick Khan releasing a memo to uh, company employees and whatnot. Um, after 40 plus years of helping build WWE and hands down the best production and media unit in the entire sports and entertainment business, Kevin Dunn will be leaving our company as of today. Before WrestleMania 1, Kevin joined Vince at WWF. Many of us remember a pre-WrestleMania WWF, a regional wrestling company that looked like a regional <coughs> wrestling company. Oh, get bent. Then we experienced WrestleMania 1, whether live or closed circuit or years later elsewhere, it was magic. A regional wrestling company had become a global sports entertainment juggernaut. Vince oh, led right the way. Overnight, none of those shows between <laughs> 1984 and 1995 looked like anything less than top-notch high-dollar productions. Oh, no, yeah. Vince Not was- never. And Always. Vince, Vince led the way side-by-side side with Kevin Dunn. When many of us kids were standing in line waiting to play Pac-Man, Kevin was already on the road breaking his back to help build. Oh, oh, let's you look. This company is going to be pretty darn good once we get all the Vince people out. Um, <laughs> I just like okay. I don't understand how you could talk about a guy being the hands down best visionary production guy in wrestling and then just let him walk through your building. Uh, that's it's heartbreaking. I, I think. 
I think it's sad to see people not be appreciated uh, fully. And I hope that AEW makes an offer. Oh, God. Why would you do that to us? Why? No, please. Please, God, no. Well, I mean, they've been grabbing all the other spare parts. Yeah, done. Uh... Some of Dunn's comments that came to light over the years, especially about female wrestlers. Yeah, you're exactly right. I I, I won't miss him. <laughs> I, I feel like my eulogy for him sort of essentially. Oh no, I, I, I kind of want to. I, I, I kind of feel like the need to clip that and 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 give it to Rich and some of her his little shorts thing that he does on on the Voices channel. Uh, maybe I will. It might take a little extra work, but I, I might do that for you. Uh, Masashi Ozawa, better known as Killer Khan, passed away at 76 on December 29th of a ruptured aorta happening in his restaurant. Uh, Khan, most famous during like the Bob Backlund era of WWF, but for my fandom, uh, was a big part of World Class Championship Wrestling. Uh, became a territorial star after Carl Gotch came up with his Mo Mongolian character, which he first used as a headliner in Mexico as Temujin El Mongol. Then as Killer Khan, he was credited with breaking the ankle of Andre the Giant with a knee drop off the top rope. Although that was basically a kayfabe story because Andre had actually broken his ankle getting out of bed that morning. But the promotion quickly came up with a cover story to build up a feud for Andre's return. Usually managed by Skandar Akbar, the world-class championship wrestling run saw him team with the Freebirds, teaching Terry Gordy the Oriental Spike, which is the story I remember, and then later turning on him after he was paid off by Akbar. Do you remember Killer Khan at all? There is a great bloody match one-on-one -on -one between him and Gordy that was circling around the internets off of YouTube that is fantastic. But, uh, yeah, anything on Killer Khan? I unfortunately got nothing on Killer Khan. Okay, not a problem, but yeah. I believe also that the character in uh, the Nintendo Entertainment Systems Pro Wrestling video game is based on Killer Khan as well. If you remember that video game, I don't know if you do or not. The, Wait, one, with what, what the one with Starman and Fighter Hayabusa. Oh, okay. okay. The, 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 the Mongolian one. character sure. that they okay. have in that, I think, is based on Killer Khan. Okay. Well. Okay. I never, I didn't play that one as much. Oh, really? I, like, okay. I, I know. Okay. So, like, I played. Saturday Night Slam Masters, a fair amount. And I know, like, Jack the Greater is based off of Vader, um, for example. Just And um, the great uh, the great Kabuki is based off of the great Muda, very obviously, in that game. Um, and then I also, of course, like played all the WCW and WF, WF games. But Mania Challenge was a big one for me. It was the sequel to Map Mania. But they're only like, but it added a drop kick, but it took out a lot of the characters. But there was, uh, there was a character that was obviously based on either Road Warrior Animal or the Barbarian. Uh, there was one based on Hulk Hogan, and the other one was just based on I think Bruno, but I don't know. But yeah. Anyways, uh, Money in the Bank weekend announced by uh, Triple H on at a Peacock Media event for the weekend of July fourth in a country that does not celebrate the Fourth of July, Canada. So, so the Friday SmackDown, Saturday Money in the Bank, and then Sunday there'll be an NXT TakeOver event happening there. Make your plans, kids. I mean, I think it's a better choice than doing, you know, a show in Saudi Arabia for the 4th of July. <laughs> oh, God. How am I supposed to move on after that? Uh, okay. All right. Patrick, no, no, Patrick. no additional thoughts on that one? <laughs> no, not really. It, 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 <laughs> It be what it be, my friend. I can't, you know. Uh, Patrick Clark, the former Velveteen Dream, came out with an apology video, apologizing to Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Ashanti the Adontis. The, the, the orthodontist? Ashanti the orthodontist? Uh, no, Ashanti the Adontis, yeah. No, uh, the Adon you, you said the Adontis. And it oh, was did like, I? Okay, my Yeah, it almost, it almost went like Ashanti the uh, orthodontist. I'm never like, addressed. Yes never addressed the specific claims and then made himself available to, to media for interviews, promising that uh, one could ask whatever question they wanted with no restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think anybody's taking him up on that. Offer. Well, the, oh, well, then hold on a second. Let me make a little bit of news here on the voice of wrestling. No, no, you're no not. yeah. Yes, sir. Patrick Clark, you sir have an invitation to come on, shake them ropes. Uh, no, we, we, no, you don't. Yeah. No, you okay. don't at okay. all. I don't all want right. to talk to that guy at all. I just, I, until he, until he comes clean about what he did, as opposed to all the things I've done that have made a 
negative effect on the company and what I want to work for. Well, no, a- hold, hold on a second. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but your boy, the Nov, used to do a little thing called news and politics podcasting. And I guarantee you, sitting on the opposite side of the uh, the interview chair with me, it will be a Frost Nixon-like moment <laughs> wherein the questions will be asked <laughs> and the answers will be had. So if, if, no, no, if this guy thinks that he's coming on, shake them ropes to get a little softball. No, no, no way. Novi, it's, this is like when Apollo Cruz decided that he was going to take, uh, no, uh, Apollo Creed decided that he was going to take, <laughs> this is like when Apollo Cruz decided that he was going to take on uh, the guy I used, Dapakato. Um, but also like when Apollo Creed decided that he was going to take on the Russian guy uh, one more time, put on the robe, uh, and the robe is back on. Patrick Clark, come on, get your journalism. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is why Rob would never have me on when we had guests, usually. Uh, no. Um... <laughs> the offer stands, sir. Dwayne Johnson officially announced the merger of the USFL and XFL, which will be renamed the UFL or United Football League. Did that at the Rose Bowl on Monday, January 1st, and then drove slash flew down to San Diego, returned to Raw to confront Jinder Mahal, basically doing the old standing up for the United States against a foreign menace spot, which led him to dropping the people's elbow on Jinder Mahal and then saying, maybe I'd like to go to dinner at the head of the table, which has now gotten everybody talking about whether or not Cody's going to be able to finish the story or if The Rock versus Roman Reigns will be your main event at WrestleMania in Philadelphia, Chris. I mean, this this is very interesting. Just recently, too, Dwayne The Rock Johnson also tried in and out Burger for the second or third time. And uh, posted about that in a very human and uh, amusing way. I think that Cody Rhodes' likelihood of completing the story decreases at the more time elapses, especially as the story doesn't seem to be very story-like. It seems like we just occasionally, like, it, it feels more like short stories that get written in drips and drabs. It doesn't... I, I have not felt like we've been on this inevitable collision course between Rhodes and Roman Reigns throughout the year. It felt it's felt like Reigns has been having his feuds, and Cody's trying to get back in title contention. But it's not like Roman Reigns is perpetually trying to ruin Cody Rhodes's life and stop him at all points from becoming the champion, which would be part of completing the story, as far as I'm concerned. The best joke I saw about this was a uh, Tom Green, our friend, our friend of mine. Uh, saying that uh, George R.R. R. Martin was going to finish his stories <laughs> before Cody ever did his. I think I think you're on to something with that. I think the major problem was <laughs> we basically took Cody Rhodes and Roman and separated them. Yeah. And then we decided we we're going to heat them up at a specific time, and now that it's time to heat them up, oh, look, we have CM Punk. Oh, look, we have Roman Reigns. We have all these options. And and the whole thing of separating Cody and Roman wasn't that Cody then took the loss and says, I need to rebuild because I need to get better and I need to be able to beat Roman Reigns. And I'm doing everything in my power to, to beat Roman Reigns. It was Cody and his friends fighting satellite people of Roman. And, you know, Cody Rhodes coming out there. Fighting the Judgment Day. The Judgment Day. Fighting the Judgment Day. They have nothing to do with Roman Reigns. If anything, the Judgment Day have a slightly antagonistic relationship with the bloodline. Like, he, he is not doing things that all formulate together to be a quest or a story. And the interest, therefore, in seeing him complete the story wanes. And for a guy who I do think you know, cares and pays attention to the beats and stuff, you know, like, like Cody does, you know, like he cares about the promos and like what he's saying week to week. I think what he's kind of missed is like, all right, if this is a story and I never believed that it was, I just believed that he lost at WrestleMania. But if this is a story then I need to make sure that over the next 10 months here, I am doing things that feel like I am questing back down the road, yes. like Lord of the Rings. And, and he didn't seem to have a very strong road back. 
uh, from losing at WrestleMania. Right. I mean, it's it's Rocky and Apollo after after Rocky won, where it's like Rocky is doing everything he can to get a rematch, and 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 Apollo saying no, 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 I don't want to do that. And eventually, has to give in. But at the same time, I think the story may have changed between the uh, regime changes of Vince and Triple A. <coughs> I still think the entire story under Vince was about Roman. And then eventually Cody might beat him and then become the bad guy as, as his family turns on him. And then Roman, you know, climbing the mountain to win his title back when, you know, when Cody becomes uh, (laughs) my precious, you know, after winning the title or something to that effect. Now I think there's far too much complication. And the question of, do you need the title on the line to have this feud? To me, the answer is an obvious, in in terms of Rock and Roman, to me, it's an obvious yes. Because without the title, it becomes an exhibition. It doesn't, I mean, the head of the table. And they they already tried doing a match for the head of the table as a stipulation. Yes, with Jey Uso, right? It was stupid. And yeah, it it was like the title and the head of the table. It's like if you got like an all-star team from the 80s to play, you know, a modern day team now and you know oh you know it's a nice exhibition but if you put an actual world t- championship on on the line well then the stakes become increased you know it, george foreman was an interesting story when he came back to boxing and you know his his matches were always nice but you know you put him in there against a vander holyfield for the title then then the stakes are much much higher and and it's it's something worth watching and uh, to me you know, having Cody face some like somebody else for the title, and then having this this consolation title belt feud. Be, the the one feud that doesn't need a title to me is Seth and CM Punk, because it feels like there's some animosity there on screen already that you can then build on. That doesn't need a title, especially not a fake title like the one that Seth is carrying around. But to me, <clears throat> the greatness of Roman Reigns right now is the fact that he holds both belts, not that he's head of the table. Right. And I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I just, the table, the table doesn't exist. There's never been a table. Yes. We have not seen meetings at any tables of late. Uh, I, I mean, like, I know this seems silly and I know it's an abstract <laughs> concept, but at some point, don't you think we should have seen the table by now? Yes. Like Roman should have a freaking like tribal table thing. I, 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 it's, I'm not saying that, like, I love this. We need to do this, that it needs to be done in like, you know, Th- Thunder Island tropical getup or whatever, but like, clearly there should be some table that we cut to and see scenes at on a regular basis. You know, like the Godfather. Like the Godfather. Or something exactly. Like, that. like it could be like a, just a dark marble table or something like that. And like people are sitting at it and like stuff actually happens at the table. Yes. They determine whether or not they want to go into gambling or drugs. We we have a kid's table. Favors, favors get asked on there. the day yes. on the day of his daughter's wedding. Yes, of course. All that stuff. You know, he walks behind somebody with a baseball bat and brains them. It's great. Uh, of interest, NXT sent Charlie Dempsey to all Japan to have a match for the Triple Crown. Uh, this happened last week, I believe. It happened right as we went to air last week, which means I didn't get to talk about, but it's a very interesting thing. Uh, William Regal announcing it on the internet to do it. Uh, he did not lose, but he got the crap beat out of him, and it was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, WWE thought to be cultivating relationships with Japanese promotions, this being the start with All Japan, but also rumored to be talking to Stardom and New Japan Pro Wrestling. As WWE would say, oh, we'll talk to anybody. And it's true, but it, it was just one of those interesting things where they've, they finally sent, you know, one of their young stars and I'm sure Regal was like, I'd like my son to get some international exposure. Can he go over there and do this for him? And, and triple H, you know, who loves Regal said, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I want to see more of this. I want them to take people who aren't progressing and go train in Japan or something like that, and then come back and be awesome. They wasted like, I'll just use this as an example. Uh, that Aaliyah girl was in developmental for six years and never got any better, but she had potential, at least, if you had sent her to a dojo or something to get other training. But, of course, that was at the time where it's like our training is the only stuff that's any good. And, of course, Charlie Dempsey, you know, he has so many people 
who have mentored him through these years. He can go to an international company and not embarrass himself or anything like that. He doesn't need quote unquote further training, but you know, further seasoning and exposure is good. And there's a difference in that. I get that. But uh, any general thoughts about that? Look, uh, I think it's cool. Charlie Dempsey got tapped for this. Dempsey's awesome. He's a, he's a really strong talent. Uh, I, and I mean, I, I, Everybody I thought think... it was going to be an Eichmann Jiro swerve because Jiro's in all Japan and, you know, the, the, he's still doing the jackets up and they had a match that they were announcing. Oh, uh, an NXT talent is going to show up here in all Japan and challenge for a match. And it turned out to be Dempsey, which was kind of awesome. I think. Yeah. I, uh, and like I Dempsey and Kemp as a tag team would be a lot of fun on the main roster. Kemp doing more of the talking and then them just being like this no nonsense grappling team. Kemp's Especially brother had a dark match on SmackDown last night. Okay, uh, okay. Little Stevenson is Gabe, back Steve, in the mix. Steveson. Steveson, Steveson. Steveson. yes. Steveson. Yeah, I know it's, it's, I, it's always... It, it's I say Steveson, and it yeah, sometimes yeah. comes out as Stevenson, but I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom. New Year's Dash happened this week. Tetsuya Naito, your new IWGP world champion, beating Sonata. And new president, Hiroshi Tanahashi, belted himself as TV champ, beating Zack Sabre Jr. Chris, hot takes, is Tanahashi the new Jeff Jarrett? You know, <laughs> I, this, like, this is exactly what we were talking about. Is Tanahashi really that much of a negotiation ship to get, like, uh, Okada and Nakamura? It, it, like, versus, like, Nakamura? I mean... Dude, Tanahashi's, he was very, very good. That was like 10 <laughs> years ago now. Um, and now Tanahashi, Tanahashi. Comings and goings for the new year. There are a lot of them that we haven't already mentioned, but um, these are the ones that we know of that that are, uh, that are that have either happened or are, are going to happen. Andrade wrestling his last match at, uh, at World's End for AEW, put out a tweet thanking, you know, Tony Khan and a bunch of other talent, not mentioned Sammy Guevara, but uh, <laughs> said he had wished he had been able to fight like the Moxes and stuff like that, but just, not, just never got around to it. Uh, he, Andrade also did a match in CMLL uh, <laughs> before World's End so he could get that out of his system. Uh, I th I'm pretty certain he's going to be appearing at the Royal Rumble and will not be appearing beforehand, but he will be one of those surprise guys in the Rumble and he'll be coming back and he'll get thrown into this LWO uh, <clears throat> mess. Probably. High quality stable that is definitely going somewhere. That is a oh, yeah. fitting tribute to the classic WCW faction. Deanna Perazzo making her debut on um, on AEW Dynamite this week, uh, late of Impact. It was rumored that Mercedes was going to be appearing on Wednesday, but instead with Deanna Perazzo defending New Jersey. Uh, Tyler Bate now officially on the SmackDown roster after getting called up last night as the special partner for Butch, don't call me Pete Dunn. Also uh, debuting last night, uh, although they've been on the roster for over a year now, the authors of Pain and Paul Ellering have aligned with Kerry and Cross and Scarlet to form a faction. Over in New Japan, the former Dolph Ziggler, Nick Nemeth, uh, appeared on Wrestle Kingdom, and he was later challenged by David Finley. That's supposed to happen at uh, whatever the... the the card is up in San Jose, something in the Valley. I can't remember the name of it, but it appears he'll be uh, at least having a bit of a run in New Japan, or maybe he's just here for New Japan and the United States. And also at New Year's Dash, one Matt Riddle challenged uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi for a match to be done in the future. looks like New Japan has decided to get back into the Matt Riddle business. <laughs> uh, and, and he's then, hotter than ever baby oh yeah and then Tama Tonga said backstage uh, th this might be kayfabe this might not this is very hard for me to say it I just have made up my mind today that this will be my last month with New Japan Pro Wrestling saying that he misses his family and wants to uh, do more stuff in the states closer to them any thoughts on any of those moves Chris uh, boy uh, I, I was thinking about does Dolph Ziggler's one promo translate better in Japanese. <laughs> um, he apparently uh, 
I think I didn't watch his promo afterwards, but he jumped. Uh, he jumped Finley at a uh, at the press conference afterwards to fight him off. Um, and, and let me guess, everyone has been counting him out for years and not taking him seriously. What and about he's never, me? They've never got. He's never gotten the opportunities. What about and, me? And he's been the show off, and every time he's been given the ball, <sighs> he's always taken that opportunity and ran with it. And you no, know, I, I mean. I just wonder how that translates in Japanese because he's going to be reading it a lot. <laughs> He'll do it in English and then the translator will write it down on the pad and do the same inflections on it. Much like, much like the Brian Danielson promo before Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> rumored moves that are going to be happening. Uh, Mercedes slash former Sasha Banks. They got it on the day is either imminent to go to AEW or is still talking to both companies. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, Wrestling Observer reporting Camille, former NWA women's champion, is probably WWE bound for NXT. I have a comment on that one, too. Sources within WWE and Impact telling Fightful that they expect Trinity Fatu, a.k.a. Naomi, to return to the WWE when her contract is done. And uh, Stardom's uh, Julia to NXT after Julia retained the New Japan Strong women's title over Megan Bain. Officially announced that her next defense will be against Trish Adora. That match has been scheduled for January 13th. They're expecting her to show up sometime in 2024, but she's going to take some time off to try and learn some English before reporting to the Performance Center. Now, of course, the big one there is Mercedes and Sa- slash Sasha. Um, She wants the Becky Lynch contract and the Becky Lynch spot. Her entire goal is to be the top star in wrestling on the biggest stage that you can get. Now I am under the impression that she asked for this and triple H said, no. And that is why we continue to get the stories about her being uncertain about what company she's going to be in. Now here's my caveat M tour on, on Mercedes. Uh, She will come in and work for AEW. Uh, But I think the expectations of her building a division up around her, I don't think that's her point. I think her point is to come in there and and show that she can be a promotions ace. Like AEW's ace, like man or woman, she's going to be the best person on your roster. And she might have some bangers with some of the people on that roster. I can see her doing that with Rio, Jamie Hayter, Tony Storm, those types. And then she's going to use that as leverage to try and tell Triple H, hey, give me the Becky Lynch spot slash contract, because ultimately, I think she ends up back in WWE. Now, she might take a detour here and there to prove that she is the biggest star in professional wrestling. But I would not delude myself into thinking that she doesn't want to go back to WWE, especially with this report that Naomi is on the way back to. Yeah, if... She ends up going to AEW. I believe it will be a short one or two year contract yes. wherein she is trying to get feuds with um, Mariah May, Tony Storm, Riho, Hater. Um, uh, yeah, who yeah. else is there? Uh, my cat. Um, no. Uh, and there's Serena, nothing wrong with that. Serena, does, no, Serena Deep. I mean, like, yeah, and she does two years and then makes it. Company. And if AEW oh. is smart and actually makes it a win-win for themselves rather than yes. do a Jade Cargill sort of thing, they can win, she can win, and then they can part ways having both won. Yes, and having a mutually mutual, beneficial yeah, situation right. for Even both Even if ones. it's not a forever situation. Yes, like there that, is and a way, yeah, right. And there's so many people that think it has to be a forever situation. situation. Look, do you see how WWE treated you? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, dude... People got their own things, man. <laughs> Get this is true in life too, right? Like it doesn't, you know, like things don't have to be forever. So long as they're mutually beneficial, people can both look back and go like, that was a good thing for us. If they both yeah, use yeah. each other, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It, there really isn't. It, it's one of those things that I think people who get tribal about this stuff don't get. It's like, hey, you know what? If Andrade wants to go to AEW for a while and. There's nothing but wrong with respectful not. use. Yeah. Yeah, the issue is disrespectful. Yeah, the issue is, you know, the issue is, I'm not, look at this slum. Why am I slumming for AEW when I should be on the main, you know, if you come in and you do your job and you wrestle and you help make that company better, 
and then you use that to get a bigger contract back where you came from. There'll, there'll be some backbiting in the media, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Now, on the Camille side, I had her pegged as going to TNA slash Impact, but her being WWE bound and and for NXT is very interesting because I think it's an insurance policy against one Jade Cargo, who you just mentioned, because they fit kind of the same slot. Yeah, except and, that Camille's good. Except, well, Camille's better. I'll tell you that much. Um, I've seen Camille have good matches. That's true. I, 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 have, yeah, I, I have legitimately seen Camille have good matches. And she could. I mean, she's 31, which isn't young, but it's not old either in wrestling. It, she could have a five-year run in WWE and make some bank there because that is the type of person. Even I mean, Vince would have loved her, but Triple H loves the bodybuilders. Triple H wanted to be a bodybuilder. And if Jade isn't the real deal, Camille could fill that slot very, very easy. Uh, she's a much better candidate to put on a streak, right? Like, like at least you put her on a streak, you can sort of fill in what needs to be filled in with her, you know, skills wise. And then when you finally decide to break the streak or whatever like that, she's ready to go. Whereas with Cargill, there were so many holes that the streak didn't, you know, you couldn't fill them all in. I, I don't know. Like, I, I just think that Camille's the much better choice. Good news before we get to the injuries. Uh, Ginny and Gunther had a baby. Uh, and then uh, Shotzi Blackheart got married when WWE was in Vegas. They played that up on TV as well. She literally came from the ceremony to the wrestling venue. <laughs> she, uh, she, she would do something like that. That's of course very, she would. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, but uh, congrats to Gunther and Jenny. I like yeah, them yeah. as a couple. They're cute. And now the injury report, of which there are many. Uh, Kota Obushi in a match with Noah versus Marafuji, um had an injured ankle and hand going into the match. Later, he did a moonsault to the floor, landed badly on his foot, injured both of his ankles, one of them broken. Match fell apart from there. It was a bad match. Um, Kota Obushi, I think, is cooked. Chris, I hate to say that because he, he was such was a spectacular athlete. This. He yeah. was cooked before this. He's been cooked. Like he's just, I, I mean, it is hard to see at this point. Kota Abushi in that blood and back. guts match, he looked bad too. I know he's in the Muda zone now in terms of decay. Uh, Roosh reporting that he tore a hamstring in his second match of the uh, Continental Classic against Mark Briscoe. But uh, continued on with that. I think he'll be... I don't know if he's getting surgery, but it might be light duty for him for a while. Uh, Keith Lee pulled from World's End. Uh, at the last moment, he was supposed to face uh, Swerve Strickland, but he says that he came out saying injury that had been lingering since his match with uh, uh, Shane Taylor on, on uh, December 15th. Uh, all Tony Khan would say it involved swelling and it wouldn't get any better. So they decided uh, to, for caution, uh, Chris, that, that match with Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland's never happening. It's never happening. It's been two years. It's never going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know that Keith Lee needs to rush in to get this match. Cause like, if he was going to do it right now, he would, you know, this is an L match where he'd lose on the way to, you know, Swerve Strickland's continual build of the championship. Uh, Raquel Rodriguez revealing via Instagram that she has been diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome. Says her eczema got progressively worse in December last year, faced a lot of redness and swelling, which kept her from traveling, the gym, wrestling, etc. Uh, MCAS is a condition in which the patient experiences repeated episodes of the symptoms of anaphylaxis. Uh, allergic symptoms such as hive swelling, low blood pressure, difficulty breathing, and severe diarrhea. High levels of mast cell mediators are released during those episodes. Yikes. Um Yikes. Yeah, that's all I got for uh for news slash that. Now time for the lazy river of wrestling criticism. Whatever we watched, and God knows there was a lot of it. We tried to watch a lot of it. Might miss some things. I apologize. If there's anything major we miss, we can go back. You write me, go on the slack, yell at me. I'll I'll come back next week, maybe if we can remember it. But uh starting with ice ice cold takes on world's end, Chris. And I, I, we were talking before the show about the Chris Jericho uh, situation on and the booing from the Wrestling Observer. Another major of the 
aspect of the show involved Chris Jericho. Nick Houseman, a reporter, got himself in the middle of a situation with Jericho and CM Punk and a Steel's lawyer, Stephen P. New, as noted here last week. New, to use the idea of Lucy Guy, the wife of Ace Steel, not having an NDA about Brawl Out and that she could talk about it after the 2022 All Out in Chicago. Jericho said that he's never signed an NDA and he saw everything. Houseman wrote to Jericho on Twitter, what about NDAs you make other people sign? Later, Houseman referred to Jericho as Harvey Weinstein, who was convicted of rape and sexual assault charges. This turned into a mess, as Dave so understatedly puts it. There were NDA and sexual assault signs in the stands. When Jericho came out, the crowd loudly sang a song, but then after the song started booing him. The reports we got is that at first it was not a lot of people, but enough that it made noise. But as the match went on, it got worse. And for whatever reason, they also took it out on Sammy Guevara as well. So it basically threw off everyone in the match. Most notably Sting in his final match ever in New York. Tony Khan was asked three times in the press conference about it and just said that AEW is the safest place to work. And when asked if there had ever been an investigation on Jericho, only said he would not respond to unsourced rumors. Uh, yeah, you know, I would say that AEW is the safest place to work in the same way that the tram is a place where you have no risk of falling. <laughs> uh, your th- Any thoughts on World's End? I think that this devil angle stinks. It, it, like, it is it is crap. That, that, that the very end of this trail... We did not have anything interesting to do with this. And so now we're trying to pretend that the kingdom and Roderick Strong are an interesting faction. And Wardlow. (laughs) And and Wardlow. (laughs) And once again, we've gone back to the only thing that I've seen Adam Cole be good at over the last five years, which is being a faction leader. Uh, But he's not even particularly interesting this time. And I think this whole Chekhov's gun of Wardlow's going to win the title for me and then give me the belt oh. is stupid. It's lame. It was bad timing to introduce it the week after this whole faction launch. Uh, this thing stinks. Okay, uh, you're, you're getting into my points. I need to cut you off. because. Go <laughs> ahead, then. I want to go in a bit, too, because because the because the promo to explain it all sucked. It did. I'm sorry. It, 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 was, it was too reasonable. It was... <laughs> Number one, you, you say that there's a Dolph Ziggler uh, promo. There is an Adam Cole promo, and that's the Adam Cole promo he knows, and that's Adam Cole's great baby story time. Repeat, rinse and repeat. The thing for me is that every reason he gave for beating up M- for for doing this to MJF made perfect and logical sense. If you want to screw a guy that nobody likes, which is the problem with the MJF babyface character. And so they basically said, oh yeah, MJF's a jerk. So he decided to screw him. And yes, you got to the very heart of another thing. We are introducing this, your latest main event heel faction, a faction that's supposedly going to be pushed harder than the Don Callis family, which has a lot of beefy dudes on that side. I don't know if the kingdom could take them, but yes, they are your new smart horseman, dangerous Alliance style faction. And on the introductory promo, you automatically start breaking them up with saying Wardlow's going to win the title and forfeit it back to me, which by the way, the exact same story Wardlow was in when he was in the pinnacle and MJF said he was going to win the TNT. And title. they already did this st- story with like with Christian. Luchasaurus. Yeah. Luchasaurus. So like, like I, I, it's a stale, stale ass story. But beyond that, we talk about how it's like a Chekhov's gun and all of that. It also undermines the leader of the faction because it's a bad plan. They, they, <laughs> It's a bad plan. Well, Chris, the it's entire the plan of the main one. event. It's a fundamental misunderstanding <laughs> of human nature, which evil heel villain leader should inherently know because he's a snake. If someone was doing this, would he ever do this? Of course not. So, like, this is clearly, for that type of character, a dumb move. When you're trying to establish them as being smart, 
it's already yeah. questionable what kind of wisdom it is to put the belt on Samoa Joe, especially when you don't have any real clear plan on how to get the belt off of Samoa Joe. But then to follow it up with Wardlow and, and that being this like triple shot, bank shot, Rube Goldberg machine to how Adam Cole ends up with the belt makes this faction look really stupid. And then Roderick Strong and the kingdom are still goofuses. So well, like not just have- that. Not just that. This, this entire thing, the, the Adam Cole hanging out with the kingdom segments, which were turned into the high comedy so much that we had to turn them twice, where we thought the kingdom was really using Adam Cole. No, no, no. Adam Cole was doing this all along. So all those all those reactions and stuff were were dumb. How do you rewatch those? Like I haven't done it because I know it would just hurt my brain, but I actually want someone to try to rewatch them and come up with the seeds planted narrative yeah, uh, and- on this because most of those like punchline beats only read and make sense in one direction and it's with them in, in an antagonistic yes. relationship. Yes. And then, say, it's not like there's subtext in this stupid fourth grade humor, like the one where they're in the <laughs> mental hospital or whatever. Like, like there's not, there's not depth there. And then, and then the entire plan for the big reveal is that Adam Cole has been, has been rooting on MJF to be a better person and to be a good champion. And the entire Rube Goldberg is revolved around, well, at some point, MJF's going to want this ring because he just won't be able to beat Samoa Joe. And then, then we can reveal ourselves when I hand him a chair. Then, <laughs> as though the faction has not been shown to be dumb enough with the Wardlow Rube Goldberg machine to get the belt on Adam Cole, after they do this big public reveal in the ring, well, guess what happens? Everyone who they've attacked comes out and attacks them. (laughs) So, like, on, what, two or three different occasions during this debut promo for the new smart faction, we see them do multiple stupid things. And we're supposed to take them seriously and be (laughs) worried that they're a real threat when they've made too many enemies already to count. And, yeah, and... Not only that, the enemies come out to attack, which I actually like. I like that, I, that like switchblade like doesn't doesn't remember. But then they hide behind the doctors. They don't they don't leave or anything. They're hiding behind doctors, at, you know the big tough guys that they are. So they're cowards too, and you're just like, oh my god, what are we doing here? And then, <laughs> what, what the chair the icing on the cake was the aside that basically Samoa Joe and and Cole were in cahoots. And he hired them to attack Hangman. Hangman comes in like a ball of fire during uh during Dynamite. He's 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 an hour and forty five minutes late to work. By the way, that, that made me laugh. But I liked him coming in being angry. But then he goes, okay, I'm gonna go start a fight at some point. And what they should have done to me is, okay, he goes into Joe's dressing room or into this uh was it undisputed kingdom thing, and they're not there. And he's trash Bang your name, by the way. Really, <laughs> really shows you that they're coming up with new ideas here. With the and, he's, and he's trying kingdom. to find them. And then he decides, barring that, now I'm going to go down and beat up Swerve. And I'm like, okay, fine. They, they cut they cut out that middleman. They just decided to go into to Paige, deciding to go back to the well again and attack Swerve. I'm here for that. The fight star, we know he's going to be angry and stuff. He storms down to the ring. And then he just stares at Swerve. I'm just like, we don't need the added drama here. Just punch him. Just punch Swerve or punch Nana. And oh, just by the way, the fight staring on. at them had just been demonstrated to be a stupid idea by <laughs> Garcia and Matt Martell. I, I, <laughs> I like, hadn't thought of that, but you're right. They just showed that that was a dumb idea. You don't just stare. You punch or go. I, I don't. <laughs> get this show and then the, yes the undisputed kingdom a stupid derivative unmemorable name for a stupid derivative unmemorable faction that is is uninspired on every level 
it's fitting that they basically did the WWE portmanteau of two different names that they've made fun of in the past <laughs> and actually settled in on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. Who's the joke now, guys? Have fun. What? Jarrah show doesn't get it over. Oh, and, oh, the portmanteau. Oh, great word. Uh, all right. We were negative on a lot of things. There's a lot of good wrestling this week on the aforementioned world's end. The eight, the, the first eight man with the people in the tournaments. Uh, I really enjoyed Mox and Eddie Kingston. I thought that was really good. And then, um, uh, and I really enjoyed Christian and it and, uh, Adam Copeland up until the ridiculous, <laughs> oh we're just gonna hand the belt back to christian type of a thing i'm like all right that's fine uh nye and becky on raw was better than it had any right to be seth and drew was really good uh on new year's or not new year's day on wrestle kingdom daniels and okada was sublime i mean it was really good and i on dynamite on on this last Wednesday, i loved darby and takeshita i absolutely ad- Darby is my favorite high flyer because he's the only one I believe because he kills himself every time he launches himself. He's a human missile at it. But my God, that he's shortened his life by five years on that match. Um, Anything that stuck out to you wrestling wise that you really liked since we were so negative on that call? No, thing? you know, look, uh, I, I mean, well, yeah. And I think it deserves, it deserves a lot of focus because they've spent months building up this to be the new narrative structure and they chose to debut it at the start of the year so like they want us to focus on it it gets our attention it was not great attention um to focus in on you know like a smaller beat that i thought was nice like i thought garcia and swerve had a really fun match i think they're doing a good job with garcia and like his slow like endearing turn and I enjoy Matt Martell on commentary. I do too. I, I think he's very funny. The the part during that match where Matt Martell asks them, can he attack Prince Nana? And then the commentators go, no, 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 you can't do that. There's a solemn vow that announcers never get up from the table. And like all of them sort of with like complete deadpan say solemn vow. Uh, I, I really appreciate <laughs> it. Like that that had me laughing pretty hard i, I do uh, love the shifting rules though of well we've said there's no outside interference in this match so there's no outside interference in this match <laughs> as if why can't we do that for every match then you know <laughs> right like like why would yeah like why wouldn't that be a standing rule it's yeah. like an exhibition match with outside interference allowed like those are those are default rules it's like they they're playing the video game and that's what it loads in on. So like yes. those are the sta- those are the standard rules. <laughs> that's a perfect thing. It's like, well, you know, I never changed the setting. Never changed the settings no on outside this. Outside interference yeah. to this. As <laughs> well, uh, I'll tell you what what absolutely killed me, and it's dumb comedy, but I love it. Our truth in that match with uh with Miz versus the Judgment Day. <laughs> Saying, I'm sorry, I love you. Pulling the HBK <laughs> thing. I died at that. I did. I, I hate our truth being involved in the Judgment Day storyline. But now we've gone to the point where it's so stupid that he's in it. That whoever it, that came, whoever like it. came up with that, whoever came up with the deployment of I'm sorry, I love you for that. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna he just do that. I had to rewind I, it. For I a know. I, I'm like, oh, damn it! The most but, dramatic uh, moment in WWE history, perhaps. And they just to, decided to, to, to invoke it, right? I mean, I appreciate because it it's a callback to like yeah. history too, yeah. uh, which makes the humor funnier. I don't know. It's good. It was. It was. That was a funny. And I need to reiterate, Nyan Becky was actually a good match. Yeah. If you had told me that Nia, who hadn't been wrestling for a couple years, I mean, yeah, she, she's she been back for, since, you know, for a little bit, but she hasn't really had, like, she long hasn't matches. Good. Yeah, yeah, she, she hasn't been good. Yeah, she hasn't been good either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just... <laughs> she, she's dropped a bunch of weight. I mean, she yeah. looks physically improved She's working sure. at it now, it looks like. Yeah. And that was yeah. a big complaint of ours earlier. And then, of course, on Raw, Seth and Drew. Dude, I... 
I hate this story, but I love their match. Although their story makes sense, though. I mean, Drew's just Drew's in his feels, man. <laughs> Drew's heel turn. Drew's heel turn's actually one of my like m- more fond heel turns. Yeah, the Drew season. part of it's great. I, so right? No, 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 no. It's, <laughs> and, and I, I know. I find his character annoying, but like, no, Drew's heel turn. I think has been unbelievably well structured and is very coherent and like it is it's he he's a guy who is sympathetic who does like things that are not sympathetic but like his his logic is actually extremely sound his logic like, is one of a normal person who remembers things that happened to him. right right and it makes and sense. i love that and, and the realignment and the reshifting of who's in and who's out has left him out because now all the people who are quote unquote in are people who have been dicks to him. So he hates them as <laughs> he should, but then people hate him because he hates people that they like. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a very good and natural storyline. And my problem with him being aligned with Rollins is just that, like Rollins's character is so over the top and this really needs someone more almost muted to like push the buttons of drew you know what it needs it it needs a mirror image of drew in terms of people who have either screwed or been nice to him and now he's on the other side going hey i was where you were at and i got changed for the better because like kevin owens and Sami Zayn befriended me i mean he really needs kind of the jay uso here yeah no i I mean really the 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 place where this needs to go in my opinion is it's drew and jay uso that like it would Jay trying to talk sense to him like look I was doing it the wrong way um and what made me start doing it the wrong way was losing big in a title match yeah uh, it, it, and, right, like, and then I did the same thing to you and I'm I and am it broke so me. sorry yeah it I broke so me. sorry yeah. it broke me yeah yeah like like, like and, and have Drew not accept that apology and that's the catalyst for the Wrestlemania feud um but, but like that that's I think you know the move here uh, your turn, sir. Ooh, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, man, I need like, what else happened this week that was of note that was positive? I, you know, I'm not gonna say positive, but <laughs> Mariah May's debut I thought was crappy. Um, oh God, yes. It was crappy and clunky and like way too long and like I, I just, I don't bringing out queen uh whatever her name is it, like the whole usage of that i rest- like we liked her in the past queen on a, on a <laughs> not gonna work <laughs> not gonna not gonna not gonna work not, here not, not gonna work here more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> i almost called her queen antifada that's not yeah. right either or queen amadala was almost where i was going and that's also wrong Amanada. 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 I I almost had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Uh, no, because she she was secretly sneaky good on like the darks and dark elevations where she'd like team with Emmy Sakara as like a chopping crew against baby faces. Like there's there's in but like who she who Mariah May should have been beating up is like a little local competitor. Well, a local cutie pants competitor too. Yeah, yes. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, like, like, yeah, and very much. She's like New Jersey sweetheart or whatever, and like, it, then Mariah May's whole promo at the end was goofy. I just think the whole Tony Storm storyline stinks. That whole promo was the Alexa Bliss emotional promo. Then she turns on him three quarters of the way through. That, that thing sucked. And I hated it. It was so dis. I mean, it was like, oh, I'm so excited to be here on, on this. I, you know, oh, in front of AEW when we know she's been a heel, and then she goes, and now I did it in front of New Jersey. And I get why they, why both her and Tony Storm, were trashing New Jersey it was to help make the Deanna Perazzo debut better. Um, oh, well, that also stunk. Deanna uh, Perazzo is nothing like. I I give her a pass on this because I've seen her, not in a arena situation and it was obvious and look, she's going to need to work on this, but if you're going to do arena promos, your voice can't warble because you're nervous. And that's what was happening there. And I, I I, I have a lot of sympathy for that as someone who's done stand up comedy and things like that, where you're, you know, you're nervous and you're in a life and you're, and you're rushing to get the words out and things like that. 
her her promos and impact that were pre-tapes have improved greatly. So I, I'm hoping that she can connect the two together. But yeah, I would agree with well, that. Yeah, then uh, then I'll give it another another shot here. I thought her initial walkout had swag. Yes. I thought yeah, but her then thing like is, her thing is her gimmick and Serena Deeb, who was just reintroduced on Zero Hour on on the AEW pay per view, are very similar. The virtuosa and the professor. Yeah. Um that makes sense as a tag team even. And then oh, my God, it, I'd be here for that. Right. And th- that actually would be a fantastic feud for Tony Storm and Mariah May. But the Yeah, and, and it also confuses things now. Who is the I I guess you have Mariah May lose, and then you can eventually build her back up, and that drives her into being more crazy and more of a sycophantic fan of Tony Storm, but then that also then treads on the um uh, Harley Cameron character that Soraya is 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 breeding apparently over there. Um but for me I'm like th- there was a lot of comparisons and, and we got and they got into this in our Discord a little bit with uh Mariah May and Tiffany Stratton. And you know there was a lot of well you didn't see her in stardom blah 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 okay but she had only wrestled for like a year before getting into stardom. She's still green, and they do a lot of this. They both do the handstand uh, Rana thing off the top rope. I I don't know if Tiffany Stratton's more polished, but I don't think it's an unfair comparison either. I don't think Can it's I an unfair. I don't think I don't think it's an unfair comparison. I don't think it's favorable for me. I d- I'm not sure if it's favorable either. I, I'm, I'm not sure if it's fa- no no in the sense that. Tiffy had a good little tough last year. She actually yeah. did turn in some good matches. She turned in some hard working matches where she definitely, you know, was willing to bleed and get into it. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm sure we, we haven't seen it in stardom yet. That's cool. But like, I mean, Tiffy's been doing it on her actual show. Yeah. So, we'll see. You know, we, um, we will see is what I'm thinking. That said, speaking of which, that, that, that segues into my next pick. I am absolutely here for the stupidity that is going to come from this Tiffany Stratton, Fallon Henley. She needs to go work on the farm. Shades of Jimmy Garvin and Precious working on the Von Erichs farm. Shades of Dusty Rhodes uh, getting Baby Doll to work on the ranch for 30 days before Baby Doll stole a horse (laughs) and rode off. Tiffany Stratton being put in a position to do manual labor is going to be unrepentantly stupid. And I am here for it, Chris. She's going to fall into some poop or, or, or a trough or something. And I'm here for it, Chris. I'm kind of here for this actually leading to a Tiffany Stratton, like face turn turn too, where like Fallon Henley and Tiffany become like unlikely tag team partners. Because no, because Fallon needs something going on, and Tiffany doesn't actually need to be going back for the belt again. You know what I mean? She's well, Fallon, Fallon Henley has shown herself to be manipulative when right. she was with Briggs and uh, and and uh, I always call him Briggs and Jensen. But it's I was Briggs very, very, I was very. Or no, it's Brooks Jensen and, Brooks Jensen uh, and Josh Briggs. And Josh Briggs. They, okay. It's J B and B J. Uh, it was there at, it, it, like we're, we're there. <laughs> the brilliant naming stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is why you end up with like these, like, you know, combination Josh Jensen, Brooks Briggs. Uh, so I, I mean, I actually would have turned Henley heel. I, I would have went the other way and completely made her like, you know, made she her like might. Tiffany may turn her to the dark side. Yeah. I, that would actually be funnier is that she works. And then, we, the and then we get the regal Bobby Eaton things where she takes Fallon Henley down to Rodeo Drive. That'd be great. Yeah. It starts introducing her to like, you know, uh these are my Hollywood fashion. friends. And these are high my... fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, high fashion, things like that. Uh your turn, sir. Oh uh, boy. Um I don't know, I, I pass. What else Okay, I, I only have one other thing on my list and that is uh it seems like we've now figured out how to use Joaquin Wilde that thing was awesome. That catapult NXT. thing? Oh, yes. boy. What a spot. Do that on the main roster and those guys get over. And and I've you know, I've always liked uh those two. They've been red shirts for far too long. You do the catapult spot at like Royal Rumble or something. 
That uh, was insane. That was such a cool move. It was so awesome to see. I mean, that thing in the small building, it looked great. In the big building with the cheer or whatever. I mean, I, I might even say, I mean, see, I think, I, I think they just scream WrestleMania pre-show. So I wouldn't waste it there much like the, uh, God, you remember when Austin Aries and, uh, and, uh, Pac had, had an awesome match on, uh, or whatever. Was whatever that 16? Was that the Dallas, uh, was that the Dallas WrestleMania? I think that was Orlando. Orlando. Okay. Uh, but they had that, uh, or no, that was, uh, no, you're, you're right. Uh, God, no, that wasn't Dallas. That was Orlando. And they had that awesome match for the, uh, cruiserweight belt and it just, it, it tore the house down, but only half the crowd got to see it, et cetera, et cetera. I would do this on a rumble match, like a multi-man tag match. None of those guys are in the rumble and pull that thing out and, and, and just let those guys, you know, get some merch sales out of it or something, you know, have, have that against, uh, um, uh, the Garza's, you know, give, give, give them a match, you know, six man LWO versus, uh, whatever, whatever, uh, Escobar is going to call his crew and just let them go to town and then pull out that spot at, at one point during the match when they're trying to take a powder or something. And then, and, 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 you know, let give, give them a moment, man. I'm here for that. That was awesome. No, I, I agree. I agree. I, I think I thought that that match was really nice. I can't say I'm enamored with like the D'Angelo family stuff is completely lost steam. It they don't has. know. They don't know what the hell they're doing with those three. They, they, they paint themselves into a corner. They can't figure yep. out a narrative way out of it. Yep. Uh, the, what is it? The, uh, what do they call their dumb Sa- tournament? Same thing with chase you chase. You is also like, like, I mean, I like, okay. The one thing I did like is JC Jane's going to get chase you back on track. Like JC J, but that's just JC Jane's very, she's her. I mean, honestly, she's expressive, expressive. which makes it great. Yeah. And she's got good delivery too. Like she knows, she knows how to lean on the lines the right way to get the maximum impact and humor out of them. Uh, and but I'm over Andre Chase, the sad drunk loser. Yeah, but, and, and do cuts and stinks too. Like the weirdest thing is the weakest parts of Chase. You are now Chase and Duke. Like yeah. it's the yeah the two women are the interesting. The two part. women are the great part of that. Yeah, you know, which which is just yeah. not a good thing for the the. They're doing a good job, but that's not a good thing. What what's the Star Wars name of the of the guy uh, who won the uh, oh. the tournament? Oh, is it Oda? Uh, I remember it but that dude i mean all these guys were green oh you I mean, mean oh you said you said Oba star wars. Oba Femi, you said star wars and i was about to be like jar jar binks like, yes. like I don't, it, 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 oh, Oba Femi, that match was so weird it was um, weird and the whole term was booked weird because the guys who are good would lose I'll tell you one thing though. I mean, if he can, if he can continue to improve, man, that, that chop spot was thunderous though. I mean, that, that was the one thing I saw. I was like, and of course WWE doesn't do brutish, violent, you know, territory style. <laughs> Get your crap in. And if you yeah, can't like, handle like it. Vader, Vader annihilates you. Yeah. Vader Oli annihilates Anderson, Hanson type stuff. I mean, like, like that that's a guy that's a guy I'd send to all Japan right there. That dude. You know, just let him brawl on some people and smack some people around. Let him get punched in the face a few times, see if he wants to be a wrestler. And then he comes back and he's just the baddest mother effer in the NXT slash WWE. I I'm here for that. But yeah, it's it's uh it's weird how they do things. So they do things so stylistically that would be such a better usage of a type of tournament like this the winner gets an excursion to all japan like the instead of them like getting into the title contention for like these type of like developmental things you set it up they're the tournament winner and that's the prelude it's a to scholarship going. to a new yeah territory where you get to and that's the prelude yourself yeah and so they hit that they hit that new territory with a little bit of an imprimatur of having just won a tournament in a built-in storyline and a bit of a built-in character. And then you also have a built-in reason to bring them back and then present them at a higher level too. And then you get smacked around for three months. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have nothing else. If you have nothing else, we can end it there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean... Uh, other than, I guess... Uh, oh, no. I, one last note. I, I did see... To the story about uh, MJF last week, 
I did see a sign that was very disturbing this week, and and I'm not sure if it was or not. Maybe you can help me out. Um, it said MJF equals emo. Now I, I need to ask you: Do you, do you detect the notes of anti-Semitism here in the disillusionment with the MJF character? Or is it just me? This has been Shake Them Ropes. You can follow me on X at Crap Game Thirteen. You can follow the show at Shake Them Ropes. You can follow Chris, maybe, on Instagram at. <laughs> then you cannot follow me later when you get bored of me. At D O C T O R underscore N O V. We are part of the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Once again, I will be on Fightful plugging this show. God knows why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and on the Raw After Show with our friend Sean Ross Sapp. I'm also on Fight Game Media on the Dynamite Show. About 20 minutes after the show ends, we do a live thorough deconstruction. Also, really good audio on that network this past week with the. Uh, with the hook awards with the, our friends on uh, the boom show, the two AEW shows got together, gave some awards and some things. Stop the scrums. They're terrible. Uh, <laughs> Chris, uh, in, in addition to being a awesome show snuffler, he sh- shuffler, he will shovel your driveway for five bucks and, and a cup of hot cocoa uh, has other projects as well. He'll tell you. About yeah, them now. yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you see the fireworks there when I did the, uh, when you said that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, you can, I mean, basically follow me on Instagram at some point here in the next month or so. My EP should start making its way onto Spotify or whatever. I'll make some sort of announcement about that. Uh, I need to get some shows booked, but if you're interested in following my antics on a mountain, uh, that's the other place to find it out. If you, if you're interested in seeing what it's like living on a mountain, cooking on a mountain, doing mountain things, on the mountain <laughs> if you want to see some of the work on the tram and that sort of thing too you can follow me there uh, i'm like less interesting or i'm less uh online now than i used to be i i'm like living a life now that i like so i, I don't post as much as the song goes chris is high on a mountaintop in more ways than one always do you like wrestling trivia then check out the five-star match game the pro wrestling quiz show i'm joe gagney in every episode I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today.